following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. There's a scar on the brain and it's too delicate to touch. I said I could be there with her. The Holy Spirit spoke to my heart, Tammy, and he said, son, what can you do that I can't do? And a girl went from eight or 10 seizures a day to totally healed. Pastor Benny Tate's wife experienced the unlimited power of God, next on Life Today. Welcome to Life Today. I'm Randy Robinson. Tammy Trent is with me. And yes. Tammy, I'm excited because uh, Pastor Benny Tate is yes. back with us. Yes. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, uh, he's the pastor of Rock Springs Church in Milner, Georgia. Uh, and if you're going to Milner, you're going there on purpose. <laughs> yes. He has one of those churches that, that they, well, you have more people in your church on a weekend or at least watching the service than actually live in your town. Is that right? Well, that's exactly right. I think <laughs> I think the population is somewhere around 800 people. I often said that our zip code is E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> I mean, we're literally we're lit literally out there, Randy and Tammy, and but thousands of people. I think. Yeah, I don't know it, but just thousands of people show up on Sunday. Which which is amazing, and and it really goes to the message in your book that we're talking about today, Unlimited. Uh, the subtitle says experiencing the fullness of God's power in your life, and this is this is something that you have lived and you are living. It, it, give us a little bit of a taste of what God has done in your life when you have said. Uh, Holy Spirit, mm. you take over, I'll mm -hmm. follow. Mm. Randy, there's just so many stories. Uh, Oswald Chambers said this. He said, the Holy Spirit is the first practical power that we experience. But he said, it's the last power we come to understand. Mm. And I really think there's power when we, when we realize Ephesians 3.20 says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above mm -hmm. all that we ask or think mm -hmm. according to the power that worketh in us. There's a there's supernatural power that's available to Christians. And to be honest with you, uh, my wife probably taught me this early on. Barbara and I were very young when we uh, started dating. Uh, Tammy, we just had a few dates and we were in love. And, Somebody said that's puppy love, but it's real to the dogs, isn't it? I mean, we were just, we were just in love. And after just a few dates, I said, uh, Barbara, I want to marry you. I want to get married. And uh, we were both from rural Tennessee, and she said, uh, you've got to talk to my dad. You've literally got to go to my father and ask for my hand in marriage. And I said, I'm willing to do anything. And so I go to her father, and I simply said, I want to get married. And he said, I don't recommend it. <laughs> he did? Oh, he said, he said, Tammy, he said, <gasps> he said, I, he said I, don't, I don't recommend it. Oh, no. He said, you don't understand what you're getting into. He said, my daughter is a very sick girl. Wow. He said, my daughter has eight or 10 seizures a day. Mm. Mm. My daughter will have a seizure and she will lose five pounds. Mm. She will gush up blood. Oh, she said, look, look at you, you're in health. He said, are you really, are you wanting to commit to this? And I said, all I know is I love her. Huh. I love her. And by the way, almost 40 years later, I still love her. <laughs> and uh, oh. he said, are you sure? And I said, I, I am. Mm -hmm. wow. So we, we got married, Randy and Tammy. We were so young. We didn't know whether to go on a honeymoon or summer camp. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, right. were, just, we yes. were just kids. Yes. And uh, sure enough, he was correct about some things. We would go to church and Barbara would have a seizure and mm -hmm. we'd go to mm -hmm. shopping and Barbara would have a seizure and we'd be various places and she would have a seizure. And uh, Randy, our finances got so bad that when she would, when she would have a seizure, I would say, uh, pl please don't call. Uh, oh, please wow. don't call an ambulance. Wow. I, I have more bills right now than I can pay. Mm -hmm. wow. and, and please don't call an ambulance. And, uh, Finally, the people in the community said, something's got to be done. They started raising money, and I sent Barbara to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Wow. And the Mayo Clinic in Rochester said, 
Barbara's got a scar on her brain. We don't know if her mother maybe had a, had a, in the pregnancy, we don't know if Barbara's took a hit to the head. We just don't know, but there's a scar on the brain and it's too delicate to touch. Just keep taking the Dilantin, keep taking the phenobarbital, keep taking the medication. It will help, but, uh, but it will never stop. And so I was hiring people to stay with Barbara. I was working as a machinist in a machine shop and a few years passed and Barbara said to me, she said, you know, Benny, uh, God has touched me of those seizures. <laughs> I really believe that God has healed me. <laughs> and I said, Barbara, I don't, I, I, I don't know about that. She said, Benny, I don't think I need to take all this medicine. I think she was taking 14 pills a day. Wow, wow. She said, I don't believe I need to be taking all this medicine. I said, Barbara, just, just me being a man of faith, I said, you just keep taking the medicine. And uh, that went on for a while. And one day I was at work working. And I told the Lord, I said, God, I'm going to make a deal with Barbara. I said, I know how to cuff my hand over her nose and mouth and get her out of those seizures faster than anybody. I, I've become pretty good because I've had so much experience. I said, God, I've got to work during the week. But what about on the weekend? Mm. What about on the weekend? She doesn't have to take the medicine. Mm. Because I said, I can be there with her. Yeah. Randy, just, just a young man, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. I said, I can be there with her. The Holy Spirit spoke to my heart, Tammy. And he said, son, what can you do that I can't do? Mm. I got into a 79 Ford Fairmont. I left work. I walked into my house. I looked at that little old wife in the face and I said, Barbara, I believe the Holy Spirit has spoken to me. You don't ever have to take the medicine anymore. Mm -hmm. Randy and Tammy, that's been 30 years ago and a girl Amen. went from eight or 10 Amen. seizures a day to totally heal. I'm Thank learning you. that Thank he's you. able to do exceedingly mm. abundantly Jesus. above yes. according to the power that worketh in us. Mm. I just want people to know that uh, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the great equalizer. The, the Holy Spirit, he, he is so wonderful. Mm. Okay, you, you talk about three attitudes we tend to have towards the Holy Spirit in, in your book, Unlimited. Uh, and, and that would be ignorance, indifference, and indulgence. Yes. When that happened and your wife was saying, I, I think maybe I can go off these meds and you were struggling with that, and I understand it completely. What was your attitude or your view of the Holy Spirit at that point? My, my view of the Holy Spirit was, uh, I don't know, God, I, I don't know if this is for us. Mm. I guess I, I almost thought, Randy, this is for the indulgent people. Mm -hmm. They're kind of crazy people. The, 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 yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, because uh, I think uh, I think churches can have a. I, I think mm. they can swing. I think I think a church can swing to a a, a cemetery, mm. or some of them can swing to. An, Insane asylum. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? I've been in both of them. I, well, I think I have too. I think I have too. Okay. And uh, so it, that was my that was my attitude that uh, that th mm. this would be an indulgent, Barbara. We 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 need to be practical and all getting get wisdom. But uh, but I what I didn't realize at that time is God was building something in my life because here I was just a young preacher, and God was showing me. That, that he could do exploits. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And God was showing me that he could do exploits in my life and he could do exploits in my ministry. Uh, just a person who had, just a, just a common run of the mill guy that God could do great things. But at the same time, when we, when in the Bible, mm -hmm. when they ran after him for the miracles, the exploits or whatever, he, he, he shut him down. Sometimes. That's exactly right. So, what do you, where do you, how do you see the role of the Holy Spirit in miracles and what's the goal of all that? I think the goal, Randy, is seeking Him. You know, uh, I think I used to travel and 
I'd preach a lot, you know, even sometimes today I'll say to my wife, I think, I'll say, honey, I think I'm traveling too much. And she'll say, why do you say that? And I said, well, the other day I pulled up at the mailbox and ordered a Big Mac and ordered fries and circled the house, you know what I'm saying? But, but really, I used to travel a lot and I've, I've got a daughter, Savannah Abigail, and when she was real small, when I would get home, like here I am with you all at life today, but when she was small, if I got home, I wouldn't be home no time till she would say, uh, Dad, uh, did you get me something? Yeah. She, she, she was looking for that yeah, gift. I got a grandson right? like that. You know yeah, all about it. Right, she right. was looking for that gift. Uh, but, you know, I learned as she grew up, it seems like as I got home, Savannah just wanted to see her daddy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She just said, Dad, I, I miss you. Yeah. And I think the secret is when we're seeking him, when we're, when we're seeking a relationship with him, just what somebody said, what, what's going to be the motivation for prayer? Somebody says, well, needs has got to be your motivation for prayer. Well, I disagree because if needs are your motivation for prayer, when you don't have needs, you're not going to pray much. That's right, that's right. Your motivation for prayer has to be to know Him. Yes, it has to be yes. for a relationship. Yes. It has to be intimacy with Him. So, yeah. so I would say to that person, seek, seek that. Seek, seek that. And it's amazing what God will do through our lives mm -hmm. when we just, when we seek Him. John R. Rice was praying on one occasion. He prayed to God the Father, and he prayed to God the Son. He prayed to the Holy Spirit. And somebody approached him and said, No, John, you prayed God the Father, God the Son, Holy Spirit. He said, you prayed to all three of them? He said, Yes, uh, I've lived long enough to get to know all of them. Mm. I've lived long enough to get to know all of them. And um, I would challenge people to get to know all of them. Hmm. Yeah, I love that you said that, Pastor, because I was going to say, so many of us talk about God the Father, God the Son, but we're not always talking about the Holy Spirit. And like we had said a moment ago, uh, sometimes I think people think it's too spooky. Uh, why is it? Okay, first of all, for people that might not know, who, practically, who is the Holy Spirit and why do we need Him in our lives daily to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Why is it important? Here's what I would say, first of all. Jesus said this, Tammy. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's necessary for you that I go away. It's necessary for you that I go away. Okay. For if I go not away, the helper will not come. See, Jesus, when Jesus was here, if he was in Jerusalem, he wasn't five miles away in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was just in Jerusalem. But he said, when I go away, the comforter, the, the helper will come. Here's what he actually said. He said, it's more important that the invisible Holy Spirit is here than the visible Jesus is here. Really? Wow. Because the invisible Holy Spirit could be everywhere. Mm. He could be everywhere. He could be in all places. That's why Jesus said, uh, he that believeth on me and the works I do, he said, he'll do the works I do and greater right. works. Mm -hmm. well, well, certainly, Tammy, our listeners and myself, we don't have more faith than Jesus. Right, right. <laughs> so it's not on the basis of faith. He okay. said, you'll do greater works. It's on the basis of the Holy Spirit could be everywhere. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit could be everywhere. And it's interesting that sometimes I know, and I've spent time in some pretty traditional denominations, and they can kind of back off from these things. But when you look at, like, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. They're very practical. That's exactly right. And and they're very much geared towards expressing God, you know, giving Him the glory, not us the glory. That's exactly right. How do you see the role of spiritual gifts playing out properly when the Holy Spirit is in the lives of the belie of believers? Well, you know, uh, when a person receives Christ, they receive the Holy Spirit. Hmm. And whether we realized or not, God, the, the Bible says, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. Hmm. God, every person listening to me today is a gifted child. And God takes those unique gifts 
and he uses them to build his body. He uses them to enhance other people. And, you know, what I challenge people is, you know, stay in your gift zone. Hmm. God's gifted you, you know. Uh, what you say, Pastor, I don't really know what my gift is. Here's what I would say. Your gift is what you do best with the least amount of effort. Hmm. And, and God's gifted all of us. And God wants us to use those gifts. He wants us, I would say to the listener today, God wants you to stay in your gift zone, but certainly he'll take you out of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. And he can give gifts freely anytime he wants. That's I've exactly that, right. Yes, know? he has. I, I've seen it through it throughout <laughs> my ministry. Yeah. So uh, so how do we how do we get there? Is it just surrender and obedience? Is that kind of the prompting? Uh, you know, you talk about... Uh, unlimited presence of the Holy Spirit, unlimited power, unlimited purpose. I, I guess I'm, I'm just trying to put a physical, you know, here, here, here's see what, how it physically looks. Here, here's the way I would simplify it. Randy and Tammy, in the, in the book of Ephesians, the great apostle Paul said to the church at Ephesus, be not drunk with wine, hmm. but be ye filled with the Spirit. Now, what was interesting, who's he speaking to? Not to a bunch of pagan Greeks. He's speaking to the saints at Ephesus, according to Ephesians 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. So here's what he said. He said to us believers, be ye filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I can just tell you my life. Uh, I'm constantly saying, God, fill me with your Spirit. I, I, I need your spirit. I, I, I need your presence in my life. See, Randy, in Ephesians 5.18, he tells us to be filled. Well, in Ephesians 5.21, he talks about husbands and wives submitting yourselves one to another. Mm -hmm. in, in verse 22 of Ephesians 5, uh, 5, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Then Ephesians 5 and 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church. Well, how do we do those things? By being filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. By being filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 6 and 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. How do you do it? By being filled with the Holy Spirit. Masters, be good to your, to your employees. How do you do it? Through being filled with the Holy Spirit. Employees, how, how are you good to your, to your boss? Through being filled. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, D.L. Moody, it's a, it's a neat story. Uh, Somebody asked D.L. Moody, they said, every time before you preach, Brother Moody, you say, God, feel me. Amen. God, feel me. Amen. And they said, why? Why do you do that, Brother Moody? Mm. He said, because I leak. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, listen, we're, we're here, Tammy, with the world flesh and yes, the devil. Yes. And whether we like it or yeah. not, we leak. Yes, it's true. And we have <laughs> access to the Holy Spirit's power. Amen. Randy, he, he told the early church, and I know I'm on a roll, but he told the early church, he said, now listen, you go to Jerusalem for 10 days, don't you do anything. Don't you preach, don't you teach, don't, don't you do anything. You just wait till you be endued with power from on high. Randy, how can we do anything outside of the Holy Spirit? That's yeah. right, yes. Yeah. How, how, how can right. we have success and significance in any teaching, preaching, ministry, in, in, in yes. using our gifts that you spoke of? Hallelujah. How can we do any of it outside of the power of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, well, Scripture says without Him we can do nothing. That's exactly right. But with Him, all things are possible. That's exactly right. Unlimited possibilities. That's exactly right. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay, uh. I want you to get unlimited uh, by Benny Tate. Uh, it will bless you. It will stretch you. It will encourage you. Mm -hmm. And we will send it to you today when you request it, when you support a really special outreach, an expression of the Holy Spirit and God's love to other people. Watch this and we'll tell you how you can bless others and get Benny's book. We're here in a malnutrition clinic in Pibo, South Sudan, and you're gonna see as we walk through just how many mothers there are here. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the death rate for children under five is the highest in the world. And the majority of those deaths are due to the complications of malnutrition. 
the children all suffering from malnutrition. They brought them here to be screened. But what you're going to see as we keep walking is that out from our centre here, it just keeps going. The mothers literally are overflowing out of here and they're going all the way down. They're going round the corner. We've had to use another room to be able to actually put mothers in. And when we consulted with these mothers and we started asking mothers whether they, you know, the, what the condition of their children is, have they lost children? More than 25% of the mothers here said that they had lost at least one child to malnutrition or a lack of food. In South Sudan, malnourishment clinics are overcrowded because of the fact villages have no food. You see, this is what mission feeding is all about. Mission feeding is about bringing highly nutritious food, life-saving food to mothers and children like this to be able to ensure that these mothers don't bury their children anymore, that these children don't lose their lives, that we are able to truly express God's heart by extending His hands and giving these children the life-giving food that they so desperately need. We have to continue these programs. We have to even increase what we're doing here. We need that lifeline, that pipeline of food. We need mission feeding to continue to save lives here each and every day. Every month with your love, we reach conservatively 350,000 children through mission feeding. These are children who probably would not have anything to eat if it was not for viewers like you. But I gotta tell you, as, as impressive as that number is, it really means the most to that one, that one child that will be spared today. I have knelt in a graveyard where they were digging graves, short graves, with the expectation that they would soon be filled. And unfortunately, they're not wrong. But through your love, we have been able to put a stop in many places to this. And most importantly, we have been able to reach out and say, God sees you. Mm -hmm. We come in the name of Jesus Christ. We give them the food that they need today, and we tell them about the food that will feed them eternally. I'm asking you to join us in mission feeding today by making a simple gift. It's this simple. A gift of $30 will feed three children for three months. A gift of $50 will help feed five children for three months. A gift of $100 will help feed 10. Some of you could feed 100 children for the next three months. With your gift of $1,000, some of you can do even more. Whatever it is that God puts on your heart, I'm praying that you will reach out and say, yes, I see that one in need. I will be an answer to that mother's prayer. I will put a stop to the pain of malnutrition. And Tammy, when we do this, I know we do it in obedience yeah. to express God's love. Yes. But I got to tell you, it feels good. Yes. It's a wonderful thing <laughs> to say to a hungry child, here's a bowl yes. of food. It feels very good. <laughs> I, I know, I think of my own life, like I I have everything I need, Randy, mm -hmm. like to survive today, yeah. but they don't, mm -hmm. they don't. And some of these children are literally starving to death. Mm -hmm. You'll never hear me use the phrase, I'm starving to death, because I know the reality of that. I never speak like that. These children are starving to death and we could make a difference in their lives right now, today. No mother should ever have to bury her child, never. And if we can be a part of that coming together as the body of Christ, as the family of Christ, doing what he's asked us to do, step up, be a blessing. If we can do that and change the life of one and then another and another, then I want to be a part of that. And that's why I'm coming to you today. Randy's coming to you today to tell you about this great need. Pray about it. Go online, make that call. Give the best gift you possibly can today, and let's make a difference to bring life to these children and families today. Across the continent of Africa, children are suffering, facing severe malnutrition and even death. 
With food reserves gone and many areas experiencing severe famine, we urgently need to replenish supplies to keep feeding the 350,000 children who are counting on us. Through Life's Mission Feeding Outreach, your gift of love can be an answer to prayer for a hurting and hungry child in their time of need. Call now with your life-saving gift of $30, $50, or $100 to help feed and care for three, five, or ten children for three full months. With your gift of any amount, we'll send you the brand new Life Planner. Bound in soft touch leather, this planner will help you with your daily walk with space for you to record your appointments, goals, inspirational notes, and prayers. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the God's Promise Serving Bowl. This beautiful and versatile ceramic bowl is decorated with 2 Corinthians 9.8 and will make a lovely addition to your table or home. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our inspiring bronze sculpture, Consider the Birds, inspired by Jesus' words in Matthew 6:26. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. Hope you are going online and going to the phone. Make the best gift you can. You will be such a blessing mm -hmm. in someone's life. And when you do, request this book, Unlimited, by Benny Tay. Benny, it's been such a good program. You have a final thought you want people to walk away with? Hey, when I would say Unlimited, my final thought would be always remember, greater is he that's within us than he that is within the world. There you go. Amen. So whatever you're facing, the possibility is unlimited. Amen. Amen. That's a good so word for good, us yeah. all. Oh, we love you so much. We appreciate you and your walk with Jesus, your whole life. You inspire and you, you bring us closer to the one who will get us through more than just get us through the storm. Amen. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Life Bye -bye. Today. Stay connected with Life Today through your favorite social media. Get access to exclusive content and news from all of the outreaches of life. Subscribe, follow, like, and get the Life Today social media experience. John Burke exposes mysteries of heaven by studying people around the world who have been brought back from clinical death. Tomorrow on Life Today. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.